Welcome to Papa's Workshop. In today's video, I want to continue with the Norton white tile method, but this time I want to be able to do an image. I want to show you exactly how to be able to engrave an image such as this using the Norton white tile method in Lightburn. Now I'm taking just a plain image that I've had in my art library and I'm taking it over to the laser and being able to create this with it. A lot of people think this is a real complicated, hard process to be able to do. And actually, it's really not. There are just some few basic principles that you have to be able to apply, and you're going to be able to have success with this method. Another thing I want you to consider, too, all of the editing and adjustments were done in Lightburn. You really don't need any additional software to be able to be successful with this process. Lightburn can do everything that you need to be able to do. At this point, I'm sure you're wondering, well, how do you do it? What are the steps to be able to get to this point of being able to have it engraved on the laser? Well, let's go back at the beginning and show you step by step on what it takes to be able to have success with this type of engraving. One thing I do want to point out is it does take quite a bit of time to be able to do this. This engraving on this four and a quarter by four and a quarter tile took approximately three hours to be able to engrave. But having said that, look at the results. I think you'd have to grieve that three hours is some time well spent. This turned out absolutely gorgeous. So now for this, let's go back to the beginning and let's see exactly how we got to this point. The tile preparation consists of using the acetone to be able to clean the tile to begin with, to be able to remove any oils, dirt, or debris that may be on the tile. And then I'm using the Rust-Oleum um, gloss. A lot of people use the primer, but gloss is what I had and that has worked well for me. So these are the products that I use to prep the tile. Once the tile is done, then I'll use the lacquer thinner to clean this paint off of the tile. Once the tile is completely engraved and finished, I use the lacquer thinner to remove the paint from the tile. There's no other sealer that's needed because that engraving is permanent. It is not going to get scratched off, rubbed off, or anything else. So the lacquer thinner is the only thing that you need to be able to use to be able to clean that paint on the uh, tile to be able to completely remove it. As far as spray painting, I do this outdoors and I use just a piece of foam board. You can use anything to be able to hold the tile to be able to prevent the overspray. Now after shaking this, I will spray off to the side to begin with to make sure that I get a good even start with that nozzle. And then I do one very light coat. I want to make sure that I have full coverage. I want to go in that direction. Then I'm going to rotate 90 degrees and go the other direction. So this gives one coat and I know that it's going to be good coverage and it's not going to have any places missed. That is all there is to the actual tile painting. From here, let it dry. It's recommended to be dry for 24 hours, but I've had success with less. I've opened up a new window in Lightburn, and I want to come over to my art library. And in the art library, I'm going to scroll down to my Star Wars images, and I have this image right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just click and bring that in. So this is the image that I'm going to be working with. And you can see that it's much longer on this height than it is to the width. So we're going to have to do some cropping to be able to make this uh, picture work also. To get started with this, I know that my tile that I'm going to be engraving on is going to be four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I'm going to come over here to the rectangle and I'm just going to go ahead and draw this out. And up here on top, because I didn't pull it out square, not a big deal. I'm just going to type in the width at 4.25 and on the height, same thing, 4.25. So that gives the height now. And I'm going to set this on its own layer down at the T1. So now I have that set up. The next thing, I want to go ahead and take this and go back to the select tool and then we're going to slide this over 
And what are you going to see? I need to be able to have this image now in proportion. So I'm going to lock it. But I want the width of this to stay at the 4.25 inches. So I'm just going to go ahead and type that in. Now what you'll notice is that if I click this, that will fit right on top of that and that'll be even. But it's still way, way long. I'm going to make this larger so that you can see it. And you can see my line right there. And what I'm going to do is slide this up and down until I get this where I want it. Now this bottom portion, I really don't need. And I definitely want to be able to have Obi-Wan and Darth Vader in the background. So I'm going to take this and just slide it right over. And let's just put it right about here. Now it's going to snap left and right. So there's my line there right on that edge. And right now I have the bottom of this right there. Let's see what the top looks like. And the top, that looks actually pretty good. We have Obi-Wan and Darth Vader in the picture. We really don't need to fist. Let's see here. I think I can actually slide this up just a little bit more. That way it gets the top of the lightsaber right there. I think that's going to look good. The important thing I want you to note is I haven't changed anything. This image is exactly the same size as it was in proportion to the original image that I imported in. The only thing that we have done so far is just reduced it down to the size of the tile. And we have set up, a, in essence, a sample tile to position this where we want it. So now let's go ahead and highlight everything and come up to the Tools menu. And we're going to apply a mask to the image. And by doing that, you're going to see this crops right down to the correct size. And that's going to be my four and a quarter by the four and a quarter. So that is going to be what the tile looks like. So we've got the tile now. That's exactly what we want it to look like. But we, now we have to be able to prepare this to be able to engrave. Now that we have the image sized correctly, we need to be able to prepare the image to be able to engrave it. So I'm just going to highlight the image. I'm going to right click and I'm going to come down to adjust the image. And now we get two screens. This is the original image right here on the left and on the right side. This is with the current settings what it's going to look like. The first thing that I want to do is select the image mode. Now you have this stucky right now, and you can actually try different ones. This to me looks a little bit clear on the uh, dinner. So I'm going to stay with that one. And then I'm going to look down and I can change the contrast by moving it up a little bit. So I have that at about 11. That makes it a little bit crisper. And let's take a look at the brightness. I do want to lighten it up a little bit. And I think I'm going to keep that at about 11. And then gamma. Let's see here. We're going to raise that up to about 1.3. That looks pretty good. And do we need to do anything here? That's really not changing anything. And the enhance amount not doing a whole lot. I'll just leave those at zero. So now I can click OK. And that is exactly what the image is going to look like. Let me give you a quick recap on what we did. When I did this, when we set up all these settings, you're going to see the 317. You're going to see the interval. You're going to see the ditter. So all those settings are really done for you already. So when you come up to the speed and power screen. This whole section is done. We've already finished it. So really the power that you're going to be using is the only thing that you really need to be able to change. And I do not want the air assist on. 
So those are the settings. At this point, I'm ready to set the machine up and go ahead and engrave this. Now I know quite a few of you are gonna ask, well, how long is this gonna take? Well, I can come right up here under the preview and it's gonna take about two hours and 48 minutes to be able to engrave this. And that's not unrealistic for an image such as this. Is there things that we can do to be able to reduce it? Sure, but I think this is gonna give a real good look. So I'm gonna live with that uh, time frame. And now let's get the laser set up and go ahead and engrave it. I want you to be able to see this side by side and that looks really, really good. That came out exactly the way that I wanted it to. So I'm very impressed with this process and it's not hard to be able to set this up. I do have half my lights off in the shop so this tile looks a little bit yellow versus the white but it does look fantastic when you're here in person. I know a lot of you have had uh, quite a bit of difficulty in being able to do the images on the white tile. With this video today, I hope you're able to learn a few things that will make it just a little bit easier to be able to accomplish it. Remember, keep it simple, don't overcomplicate it, and you're going to be able to get results like this every time. I think this looks amazing, and it's not complicated to do, as you saw in the video. And if you think this image looks good, go ahead and give me the like down below. But I also want to show you something else. Another one that I had done just recently is this one right here that shows amazing detail. It's a wonderful opportunity that what these lasers are capable of doing. I absolutely love it. In the video that I had just recently completed on the complete guide to the Norton white tile method, I showed exactly how to be able to get results like this. Now this is an amazing detail that I want you to be able to take a look at. And if you think this is amazing, I've got one more example for you. Now this is a file I've had in my art library for quite a while and I want to do it today. Okay, I went ahead and turned on the layer for layer 29. This is what I'll use to framing with the two passes and the output is turned off on the blue. So now I'm going to come down here and hit start and we'll cut off bounds and that is fine. So let's go over here and make sure that it's framed. I've used this technique now quite a bit and it's just running its own job and that's why I can control the speed, I control the number of passes and really two passes works well because on the first pass I can adjust it and then on the second pass I can verify everything. In the beginning, I ran three passes, but it's really not necessary. Now, at this point, it should be framed right where it needs to be. So this second pass is a good double check just to make sure. And that is coming out really nice and very consistent. Oftentimes, I have used three passes, but more and more, I'm reducing it down to two passes because I'm able to get everything aligned exactly the way that I want it. Now this particular tile, I sprayed it this morning, so I'm not waiting for a full 24 hours for the paint to completely dry. So this is gonna be a little bit of a test to see if this paint's dry enough to be able to work. All right, now we'll go ahead and turn off the framing layer, turn on the blue, and everything is showing up nice and dark. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the glasses and hit start. Just the initial impressions, it looks like it's going to engrave just fine. Now again, this paint's actually not 100% dry. It was only sprayed a couple hours ago. And look at this. Wow, this is absolutely amazing. The detail that's showing up is just absolutely fantastic. I'm hoping that the paint was dry enough and that this is going to be successful. Because this is a beautiful, beautiful engraving. All right, it's all finished. Let's take a look at that. That looks absolutely beautiful. Now remember, it still has the paint on it. Let me go over and wash it off with the lacquer thinner. So there's the finished image. Now again, this paint was only put on about two, two and a half hours ago. 
and it's sufficiently dried so that this looks really good. So I'm very impressed with that. So that's what I'm saying. Experiment, experiment, and then experiment some more. So if you like this video today, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And while you're there, hit that little subscribe button right down there along with the bell notification. And if you would, leave me some comments. And I will do my best to be able to answer each and every comment. What has worked for you? What has not worked for you? And ask as far as the difficulties and I'll try to help you work your way through to be successful. By being able to leave comments and the likes, that actually also, in addition to helping you, it also helps the channel. <laughs> the YouTube algorithms love that. So again, thank you for watching today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video on whatever project that I'm working on. Bye.